This video is sponsored in part by Bright Sellers. Maryland and Virginia, two bordering mid-Atlantic states in these United States, separated by the Potomac River. Oh, in DC. They're the only two states to border the District of Columbia, AKA Washington, DC, which is the federal district. That's the capital of the entire country. Is there a rivalry between Maryland and Virginia? Yeah, I'd say there is, at least in the DMV, AKA the National Capital Region. And there's the Maryland-Virginia football rivalry, which is kind of something. Overall though, much of the difference between these two states is rooted in history, which we'll get to to later on in this motion picture. Both states are along the east coast bordering the Atlantic Ocean, but oh, they got some mountains further inland. The Appalachian Mountains to be specific, although there are more mountains in Virginia overall. Both states have oceanic, humid subtropical, and humid continental climates. Being near the ocean, both do have to worry about hurricanes. Being further north, Maryland doesn't get quite as hot in the summer months, and Virginia doesn't get quite as cold in the winter months, but both have quite humid springs and summers. If you can't handle humidity, yeah, don't move to Maryland or Virginia. Both have a topography that's diverse, with sandy dunes and low marshlands near the ocean, to gently rolling hills in the Piedmont region, to the aforementioned mountains out west, the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the country splits up both states. On the east side, of it is the Delmarva Peninsula, which includes both the eastern shore of Maryland and eastern shore of Virginia. The eastern shore of both states is more rural and flat and more vulnerable to hurricanes and rising sea levels due to climate change. Both states have just one highway that links the eastern shores to the rest of each state. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel links Virginia. It is one of only 12 bridge tunnel systems in the entire world. The massive Chesapeake Bay Bridge connects Maryland, and it's freaking busy, and always backed up, especially during the summer, which is why Maryland's government has considered creating a second bridge that crosses the Chesapeake. The median age in both is nearly identical. Both states have two of the lowest poverty rates in the entire country. Only New Hampshire currently has a lower poverty rate than Maryland. The biggest religion in both is Christianity, specifically Protestant, although Maryland has quite a bit of residents who identify as Roman Catholic. More on why that is later in this motion picture. Both have lots of historic sites. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, first of all, thank you. And second, um, yeah, you, you would love all the preserved history in both. Both have residents who speak multiple distinct accents and dialects. So what about differences? Well, first of all, Virginia is bigger in land area. About four times bigger, actually. Virginia also has more people. That said, Maryland has a higher population density, and only four states have a higher population density than it. Maryland's largest city, Baltimore, also is much bigger than Virginia's biggest city, Virginia Beach. Maryland is completely part of the Northeast Megalopolis. A part of the country that contains more than 17% of its entire population, or some 50 million people on less than 2% of the country's land area. The cost of living is higher in Maryland overall. That said, around the District of Columbia, it's all expensive, for real. Virginia borders more states. In addition to bordering the District of Columbia, which is not a state, of course, and Maryland, Virginia also borders West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Maryland also borders Pennsylvania, Delaware, and West Virginia. And now might be a great opportunity to uh, talk about how Maryland is totally the weirdest shaped state in the country. What the heck is up with that anyway? I mean, it's almost broken into two right there. By the way, this area is often called Maryland's narrow waist or skinny neck. At its narrowest point, there is less than two miles of Maryland between West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Well, before we get into how Maryland got its crazy shape, let's just get into the history of both states. Shall we? We shall? Well, good. 
We shall indeed. Humans have lived in the area of modern-day Virginia and Maryland for thousands of years. Before European arrival, eastern modern-day Virginia was dominated by the Powhatan Confederacy. However, several other American Indian tribes are native to the area, including the Tutelo and Saponi, Catawba, and Cherokee. Meanwhile, modern-day Maryland was also home to the Powhatan and Tutelo and Saponi, but additionally, the Nan Nanticoke, Lenape, Susquehannock, and Massawamek. In 1607, the English came over. In fact, that's why I'm speaking English to you right now. The London Company established the colony of Virginia, named after Queen Elizabeth I of England, who was also known as the Virgin Queen. Eh? Eh? Anyway, the colony of Virginia was the first permanent English colony in the Americas, which is why Old Dominion is is the state nickname today. After a rough start, the settlement of Jamestown, located on the north bank of the James River, eventually thrived as the first permanent English settlement in the Americas. They first settled the area for gold, but ain't no gold around these parts. However, they soon figured out how to grow tobacco, which might as well have been gold, am I right? Since it became so valuable, European settlements steadily increased after tobacco became a cash crop. In August 1619, the first recorded slaves from Africa arrived near Jamestown and worked in tobacco fields. Over the following decades, more and more Africans would be forced to migrate to Virginia to become slaves. Meanwhile, a dude known as Sir George Calvert, first Baron Baltimore, took quite an interest in the English colonization of the Americas, not only because he wanted to make money there, but also also because he wanted to set up his own colony there as a place of refuge for persecuted Irish and Roman Catholics. See? I told you I would bring up Roman Catholics again. You didn't believe me, did you? Anyway, in 1632, King Charles I granted a charter to Calvert to form a colony, but then Calvert died. So his son, Cecilius, got it going with his other son, Leonard, becoming its first colonial governor. They named it Maryland and really pronounced it that way. Not like us crazies today calling it Maryland. Besides, it was Mary's land. They named it in honor of Queen Henrietta Maria, the wife of King Charles I. Anyway, this began many, many years of border disputes between Virginia and Maryland. Many of the earliest settlers of the colonies of Maryland and Virginia were indentured servants, or people who paid for their passage to the Americas by being forced to work for somebody for a certain number of years before getting their freedom. This really picked up after King Charles I was, uh, you know, <laughs> executed for treason in 1649. That same year, Maryland passed the Toleration Act, which kind of accidentally expanded religious liberty, even though it made it illegal to deny that Jesus was the Son of God with the punishment of death. Holy crap. Still, it was the first law on religious tolerance in British North America, so that's something. Beginning in the late 1660s, both Virginia and Maryland colonists would sadly pass new laws that further restricted the rights of all blacks, both free and slaves. Meanwhile, the British Crown had taken over the colony of Virginia, since they didn't like how the London Company was running things. For the rest of the 1600s, the colony grew quite quickly and brought a lot of wealth to England and certain plantation owners. In 1682, Maryland wanted to take over all the aforementioned Delmarva Peninsula, but the new king, Charles II, didn't let them, instead giving what became known as Delaware to Pennsylvania. Well, for the next 75 years or so, Maryland now had border disputes with Pennsylvania regarding both its eastern border and northern border? Wait, northern border? Yep, that's a pretty famous border. Today it's known as the Mason-Dixon Line, named after Jeremiah Mason and Charles Dixon, who drew it up in the 1760s. They settled the northern border between Maryland and Pennsylvania once and for all dadgummit, and that border eventually became an informal boundary between states in the north where slavery was illegal and states in the south where slavery was legal. Meanwhile, out west, Virginia 
still have been disputing Maryland's southern border. Maryland wanted it to be the southern branch of the Potomac River. Virginia wanted it to be the northern branch. Long story short, Virginia won the border battle since they were the bigger, more powerful colony. Virginia and Maryland did settle disagreements over how to share the Potomac River. However, with the Compact of 1785, which served as a model for other states on how to settle disputes in the future. Oh, I skipped over the American Revolution. Uh, yeah, the citizens of both Maryland and Virginia played a big role fighting for independence from Great Britain. Obviously, some of the most important figures from the Revolution, like Patrick Henry, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington, came from Virginia. After the United States became an independent country, both Maryland and Virginia thrived. In 1790, Virginia was the most populous state, and Maryland was sixth most populous. In the War of 1812, Maryland saw a lot of action, especially with the Battle of Baltimore at Fort McHenry. It was the battle which inspired Francis Scott Key to write the poem Defense of Fort McHenry, which later became the lyrics for the Star Spangled Banner, which today is the national anthem of the United States. Sadly, a big reason why the two states thrived in the early 1800s was slave labor. In 1831, an enslaved preacher named Nat Turner led a slave rebellion in Virginia, killing as many as 60 people. In response, around 30 African Americans were hanged or expelled from the state. And the General Assembly passed harsher slave laws, like laws making it illegal to teach slaves how to read or write. Both Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman escaped slavery in Maryland, and both became heroes to the abolitionist movement. Tubman even went back to Maryland at least 13 times afterward to rescue at least 70 more people out of slavery. Dang, that's courageous. Virginia was also where the abolitionist John Brown tried and failed to incite another slave rebellion in 1859. He attempted to take over a federal armory at Harper's Ferry, but ultimately Brown was captured and executed. After the election of Abraham Lincoln as president in 1860, Virginia's General Assembly voted to secede from the Union over the slavery issue. And this soon, along with other states seceding, led to the American Civil War, with Virginia leading the fight for the newly formed Confederate States of America. Maryland, even though it was still a slave state, decided to stay with the Union. Meanwhile, several Western Virginians in Wheeling also opposed secession and wanted to stay with the Union. In October 1861, they voted for a new state, and the next April, they had a new constitution. They were admitted to the Union as West Virginia on June 20th, 1863. So this split Virginia into two states, with West Virginia fighting for the Union, and Virginia fighting for the Confederates. And it was basically a smaller version of the entire war. Many big name Confederate generals, like Jeb Stewart, George Pickett, and Robert E. Lee were from Virginia. Most of the battles in the Eastern Theater of the Civil War took place in Virginia, mainly since the Confederates had to defend its national capital there, which was in Richmond. There is no doubt that the Civil War left Virginia devastated. Although Maryland was where the horrific Battle of Antietam took place, the bloodiest day in American history still was the day of that battle, which left around 23,000 soldiers killed, wounded, or missing. After the Confederacy lost the war and the United States reunited, Virginia's economy struggled for the rest of the century. Maryland's economy did better. Racial segregation was also not nearly as pronounced in Maryland as it was in Virginia. It wasn't until World War I when the economy really picked up again in Virginia. By that time, Maryland was booming, especially since it had attracted many more immigrants from around the world. For much of the 1900s, Maryland was growing at a faster rate than Virginia, but that trend has reversed since the 1980s. Still, today the median household income remains higher in Maryland. Major industries today in Maryland include healthcare, government and public services, and retail. Major industries in Virginia also include healthcare and 
government and public services, but additionally, technology. According to both CNBC and Forbes magazine, Virginia is a much better state for business. In fact, CNBC thinks Virginia is the best state for business right now in the entire country. And yes, you may not be surprised to hear that taxes are higher in Maryland overall. More Maryland residents have college degrees. Maryland also spends more money per student on education. The violent crime rate is much lower in Virginia. Thanks, Baltimore. Why'd you shoot Mike Mike in his, um, his hind parts, Mr. Little? Let's say we had a disagreement. Maryland leans more to the left politically. The last time Virginia has voted for a Republican for president was 2004. Maryland? 1988. Maryland's state legislature also currently has more Democrats in power. That said, both states do currently have Republican governors. Virginia residents are more religious. Maryland has a more ethnically diverse population. There are no professional sports teams in Virginia, but Maryland has the Baltimore Orioles and Baltimore Ravens. Oh, and technically the Washington Commanders play in Maryland, although they may be building their new stadium in, you guessed it, Virginia. Virginia often is nicknamed the, quote, mother of presidents. Since eight American presidents were born there, none have been born in Maryland, surprisingly. Although a vice president, Spiro Agnew, was from there. Not saying it's good to be proud of that, but you know, it's much easier to gamble in Maryland. Here's something I learned only recently about Virginia. It's the home of the internet. Well, it's the home of the majority of the world's internet traffic. Specifically, much of this traffic passes through the town of Ashburn due to its many, many data centers. Maryland is known for its blue crabs and Virginia is known for its oysters. Maryland has a better flag. I don't care what anybody says. It's the coolest looking state flag flag in the country. Come at me, bruh. Virginia is the only state in the country in which its governor can only serve one four-year term. I can dig that. Judges in the Maryland Court of Appeals randomly wear red robes? Okay, it's time to wrap this up, baby, because I'm talking about judge robes. In conclusion, Maryland and Virginia continue to be very desirable states to both live in and visit. They also remain two states where the North meets the South. And if you've never been to the United States, it makes sense to visit these two states first to get a great sample of the country. Heck, you've even got the nation's capital between them. This video is once again sponsored in part by Bright Cellars. They once again shipped a box of wine directly to our house and Mrs. Beat is here with me again to open it. She took the quiz online. I took the quiz online. They match up the your palate, you know, on your tongue. What you like what you like to taste. That sounded kind of bad, but <laughs> that's okay. As always, it comes with these informational cards. So let's see what we got. All right, we got the California Pinot Noir, Rose. Petal Press. Petal Press, Apostate with a bunch of naked people on. Color Fast, it's a Sauvignon Blanc. Rising Tail, which is also a Pinot Noir. Obscura, another Zinfandel. Which are, which of these wines are you most excited to try out? I want to try Obscura. Let's learn about Obscura. So it says, a classic California Zinfandel. This wine is bursting with jammy strawberry and raspberry aromas. Spicy black peppercorn on the palate is balanced by a ripe round mouthfeel. And you pair it with watching the evening, evening news. news. <laughs> uh, I don't think people watch the yeah. evening news anymore, but they could, the yeah. evening YouTube. How yeah. about that? The oh. evening Mr. Beat There channel. you go. <laughs> Viewers of my channel will get 50% off a six bottle box like this one. That includes shipping. Click on the link in the description of this video to try it out. You doing that helps out my channel as well. Thanks for sponsoring Bright Sellers. Yeah.
So which is better, Maryland or Virginia? A lot of you wanted me to compare those two states for this series. Speaking of which, I only have one state left, and that is Michigan. What should I do with Michigan? Should I compare it to Ohio, like many of my Twitter followers suggested? Or there's still the possibility of me comparing the Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula. Let me know what I should do in those comments. I'm still torn between those two options. Thanks for watching.